Hey guys, this is Voice Tutorials. I'm Jacob, and today I'm going to be showing you how to double track guitars. Okay, before we record anything, we're going to need to get some plugins so we can get that stereo effect that we are so desiring. So, first, you're going to go to your internet browser, open that up. And once that opens up, I just go to google.com. It'd be a pretty common site, I think, at this point. From there, you're going to go to the search bar and type in Vesco FX. So that's V E S C O F X. And the very first link that comes up is the one you want. So this will take you to their homepage. And once that loads, just click on products to the top of the page right here. And scroll down to the bottom to find their free plugins. And here's the two we want uh, free H A A S and free Q, which is just an EQ plugin. Uh, you don't need to get that if you already like the EQ you're using, but hey, if you don't have a good one yet, just why don't you download it. So first we're going to download the stereo delay. So just click right here, download. Once again, this is free, which is, considering the quality of this, it's very good. So if that's downloading, go back. And you're going to want to go and download the EQ as well. Unless you already have an EQ you'd rather use. But if you don't, this is a good one you can grab. It's got some good presets and it's easy functionality. So once these two have finished downloading, you're going to want to unzip them. Uh, these are zip files, so you don't need WinZip or some other kind of program. But uh, just extract the files. And, okay, so once you've extracted all the files, now we have to import them into our audio workstation. So, before we do that, find whatever workstation you're going to use. I use Mixcraft 4. It's um, only $60. It's cheap. It's got a free trial. I recommend trying it out, but you can also use Audacity, GarageBand, whatever. So, from there, open the file location of wherever your VST plugins are stored. Mine is stored in a folder aptly named VST. So, I open that up. And what we're going to do is we're just going to drag in these plugins into our folder. So they have a Windows version and a Mac version. I'm on Windows, so I'll open that up. And just here's the application. See, so you just drag it in there. And I already have it in there since I've been using it for a while. But So you would just click move and replace or whatever. And same for the EQ. Do that. You just open that up. Once again, I'm on Windows, so I pick Windows, and then just drag that into our VST folder. And that will bring it up in our program. So now, we're going to open up our project. Okay, so I got my project up. This is just some random project I'm working on. And before we add any effects, of whatever you're recording, you're going to need two takes. And not just two takes of the same guitar, but two takes of the same guitar part played through slightly different settings. Uh, for example, if you have a distorted guitar, you would want to go with another distorted guitar playing the exact same part, but with a slightly different distortion. The effects should be similar enough that they don't really sound drastically different, but also have subtle differences that's going to help when we pan them in stereo to sound fuller. And more rich. So I've got my two takes here. Uh, I'll play a little bit of each of them so you can get a feel for the subtle differences I'm talking about. <laughs> Once again, notice they are pretty similar sounding, but different enough that when we put them in stereo, that it'll sound rich, full, and just this wall of sound that we're trying to go for. So here's how we put it in stereo, and here's how we double track it. First, I'm going to go to my effects. 
I'm going to pull down my effects drop bar and we're going to scroll down to VFX free HAS. So click on that and they have a lot of good presets here. Since this is a more distorted guitar, I'm just going to use the rock guitar preset. And I usually pan my first one to the left. So notice this is panned to the left in here, L for left. This track will also have to be panned to the left. So set the pan to about 50%. Anything more than that, then it starts to be overdramatic. And I will just add some EQ as well. Once again, this is the free EQ we downloaded. You do not need to use this. If you have an EQ you like to use better, that's totally okay. Uh, I'm just gonna turn it on. Once again, we're going to use the same effects for the NIST track, but we're now going to pan it all to the right. So click the HAS delay and click Rock Guitar again. However, this time we're going to click on the R instead of the L. And instead of panning it 50% to the left, we pan it 50% to the right. And I will just add another EQ onto it and I'll use the same setting. Okay, so now let's hear what these two sound like played together, panned in stereo using our double tracking technique. <laughs> Okay, now notice how much better it sounds. It sounds a lot crisper, fuller, richer. It's this wall of sound effect that we're going for where it sounds like almost like a chorus of guitars. That's what we're aiming for and it really improves the quality of your recordings. And once again, this will apply to the rest of the effects in the track. I've recorded the same part twice, but I use slightly different settings. Uh, here's me playing a different part once again, I've already tracked it and it sounds just as good. Here it is. Two guitars, two slightly different effects, same guitar part. Double tracked, sounds fantastic. So we're gonna do the same thing, but for our rhythm guitar. Uh, here's the rhythm guitar part. I'll just play, uh, and it, it, this is just an example of palm muting. And here's the second rhythm guitar part. Okay, now what we're going to do is take these two tracks and do the exact same thing we did with our last tracks. So, I will go over here and I will select my has delay. And I will, this time since I'm using the rhythm guitar, I will use the heavy guitar setting. I like to use different stereo delays for different guitar parts just to give it a sense of variety. But, whichever one you think sounds best. And then I will go down and I'll add some EQs again. Now let's make the first one, notice pan to the left, match it up, set pan, left, 50%. Okay, and we do this, this for the exact same way we did it last time for the other guitar part. So effects, same delay. Once again, we picked heavy guitar for rhythm guitar part one, so for rhythm two, we will also pick heavy guitar. Click edit, and we'll click on the R. So now it's panned to the right, and let's match it up over here. Set pan, right, 50%. Okay, and let's just add an EQ for good measure. So now we have these two parts all lined up. Now we're going to play all four parts, all double-tracked, and see what it sounds like. And that's really all there is to it. What's so good about this technique is that it can also be applied to instruments besides guitars, whether they be keyboards, um, 
stringed instruments, whatever. Um, in this example, I'll even use a MIDI keyboard. So not a real keyboard, just a digital one. And here's my part right now. And let's listen to what it sounds like before it's double tracked. It's not bad, but it sounds kind of flat. So let's double track it and make it sound a whole lot better. Since this is a MIDI part, I can just duplicate it. That's fine. So I will go up to duplicate track. Now I have two keyboards. Once again, like I said before, we need to have slightly different settings, slightly different effects. So I'm going to try and find two similar keyboards. Let's get warm piano pad. The first one and we'll select piano and string pad for the second one. Now go over to the effects and I've already got them selected out, but we go same process. We'd go to VFX free HAS and Thankfully, they have a keyword setting, which I will take full advantage of. And let's make sure it's set to the left. Okay. So now we set this pan to the left, 50% as always. And we'll turn on some EQ for good measure. Same process with this one. I will select my delay. Same way as always. There it is. And we will select keyboard. And click R for right. Now, correspondingly we pick right 50%. So now we have it all set up. Let's hear what these two pianos sound like playing in tandem, double tracked. Notice how, once again, it sounds a lot fuller, a lot richer, and just overall more professional, which is what we're aiming for with this technique. So I'm going to go back to my very first guitar part, and I'm going to record some, I've already recorded some harmonies, I'll just unmute them. Uh, if you've recorded your melody, I usually double check the melody every time in the lead guitar parts. But when I'm going to play harmonies, I'll single track them sometimes. My harmonies are only single tracked here. You can also double track them, but keep in mind when you're double tracking, you're increasing the file size exponentially. And the computer has to work a lot harder. So if you do a lot of double tracking, you might want to mix down your track first. Uh, Mixcraft has a mix down feature, which takes everything I have right now and makes an MP3 out of it. So I can just keep on building onto it without using up so much computer power. Mixcraft also has the ability to freeze individual tracks, and freeze an individual track is sort of like mixing that track down. It makes a little tiny MP3 out of it, so that when it plays it, it doesn't use all. It doesn't have to process the effects in real time since it's been pre-processed. Just to let you work with more stuff up at once. So keep that in mind. The more double tracking you do, the larger the file gets, and the more your computer has to work. So this technique, if you're using a laptop, might not be the best computer for it. Try to get a desktop that can at least handle it. So here's what my first guitar part sounds like once I add the harmonies. Once again, it's all double tracked. Let's get a taste of that. <laughs> That's all there is to it really. So once again, double tracking is a great way to make your recording sound more professional and give them a richer, fuller sound. You capture this, you can get that awesome wall of guitar sound that you hear in so much of the music we're listening to. And it's just really gonna improve the quality of all your recordings just exponentially. So this has been another voice tutorial video. Uh, once again, I'm Jacob. Thank you guys for watching. I Hope you guys make awesome music with this technique.